based in large part on Adam Hamilton's book, Half Truths. We're going to explore over the next five weeks those common sayings that many people use uh, that sound like they come out of the Bible, but they don't. And when we imbue them with some theological meaning, then we can run into problems. This morning I'll be talking about that half-truth, everything happens for a reason. Will you bow your heads now as we pray for illumination? Lord Jesus, you are the way and the truth and the life. What we know of God, we know because of you. Open our hearts to the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may receive your good news with great joy. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, beginning at verse 11. This commandment that I am giving you right now is definitely not too difficult for you. It isn't unreachable. It isn't up in heaven somewhere so that you have to ask who will go up for us to heaven and get it for us that we can hear it and do it. Nor is it across the ocean somewhere so that you have to ask who will cross the ocean for us and get it that we can hear it and do it. Not at all. The word is very close to you. It's in your mouth and in your heart, waiting for you to do it. I call heaven and earth as my witnesses against you right now. I have set life and death, blessing and curse before you. Now choose life, so that you and your descendants will live by loving the Lord your God, by obeying his voice, and clinging to him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. In the 1956 movie, The Man Who Knew Too Much, it starred two very well-known actors, Doris Day and Jimmy Stewart. Now, I was only two years old when that movie came out, so I have to say, I don't remember anything about it. I don't even know if it was a comedy or drama, but the one thing that I do remember about that movie was an Academy Award-winning song that became the signature song of Doris Day. Que sera, sera. Now, you may know that in this song, it highlights a young girl speaking to her mother, asking her what she will be. Will I be pretty? Will I be rich? Here's what my mother said to me. Que sera, sera, you know the song. Whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. Que sera, sera. The meaning of que sera, sera is that what will be, will be. And yet we know that this song, while it has the ring of truth, is merely only half true. No one knows exactly what the future will hold, how our lives will take the various twists and turns that will lead us towards joy and sorrow, triumph and tragedy. While we can know some things about the future to varying degrees, a lot of things remain hidden. They are as if they were behind a curtain just waiting for someone to pull out. But in the meantime, there's a lot of things that happen to us, and we struggle to know the reason. Do things really happen for a reason? 
Now, when I hear that question, does everything happen for a reason, I ask myself this question, oh really? Is it clear that everything happens because it has been planned or ordained by God? Or does it happen because of a, a lot of random chance events? Or does it happen because we make choices that influence the future? And of course, the answer to all of these is yes. Sometimes life just happens. Lightning strikes a home and it catches fire. A flood rises up and our homes are destroyed. And sometimes things just happen. But sometimes we have a choice in the matter. Sometimes we can influence our own future. After all, God gave us a brain and God expects us to use that brain to evaluate and think out solutions to different problems. And sometimes things are already predetermined for us. After all, I did not get to choose who my mother and father were. I did not get to choose the time in history that I would be born or the nation that I would be born in, nor the DNA sequence that I have that determines the color of my skin and eyes and even the color of my hair. Some things are simply predetermined for us. But does everything really happen for a reason? A lot of people believe that, and they believe that that is in the Bible, that there is some grand scheme at work, that God has a purpose for each one of our lives, which I believe is true. But that purpose is to know Jesus Christ and to receive the salvation that he has to bring. Not everything in our lives is knowable. But we all want to make sense of it. And sometimes, maybe you have said, everything happens for a reason. You know, sometimes we say stupid things. And sometimes we say something to someone who's hurting in order to try to explain what's going on, but we end up doing more harm than good. Now, I have found that it is a, a general rule of thumb that when you don't know what to say, you shouldn't say anything. Can I get an amen to that? Don't try to make sense of the senseless. Just being there in someone's pain is all that is needed. Silence sometime says it all. I have a friend who is sharing with me the story of her family. She was telling me that she grew up in a home with both her parents and she had two older brothers. She said, we lived in a neighborhood that was wonderful. It was a great place to grow up until the day it wasn't. She said, my older brothers were playing out in the front yard. I was just a toddler. My mother was watching me. When a neighbor drove up in her car, she parked beside the curb, and she called my mother over, and they began to visit about the news of the neighborhood. My mother was holding me in her arms. My brothers were playing in the yard. My oldest brother, David, was playing close to the curb, and suddenly, unexpectedly, the woman in the car, her foot slipped off the brake, and in trying to reapply the brake, she accidentally hit the accelerator. 
and the car leapt over the curb. It ran into the yard, running over my oldest brother, David. He was pronounced dead at the scene. The next few days were simply a blur to her family. There seemed to be an endless parade of friends and neighbors and church folk that were bearing green bean casseroles and desserts of all kinds, wanting to do something but not really knowing what to do. She said, my mother was almost catatonic with grief. She sat out on the front porch, looking out into the front yard, really looking at nothing. As people came by, they offered their sympathies, but she said, I'm not even sure she was aware of them. One neighbor came and knelt beside her, and she said to her, Betty, I'm so sorry. But you know, everything happens for a reason. I guess that God just needed another angel in heaven. And suddenly she came out of her stupor and she rose up and said to her, I don't believe that God kills little children because he needs more angels in heaven. That is not the kind of God that I worship. And if God were actually that cruel, I would not believe in him. You see, sometimes we say stupid things trying to comfort. Sometimes we try to explain the unexplainable because we don't know what to say. It is not easy to look in the face of someone who is in pain and suffering, who is in anguish and grief. Our hearts begin to pound within our chests. A drop of sweat begins to run down the back of our neck. And all we can think of is that we want to get away. Because somewhere inside of us, we know that the same things could happen to us. Life is fragile. Tragedies happen. But when we say something like everything happens for a reason, we harm more than we help. Dr. Leslie Weatherhead, Dr. We- Dr. Leslie Leatherhead, in his book, The Will of God, makes the bold assertion that not everything that happens in life is God's will. Certainly, that is true of sin. God does not will that we sin. God does not will our disobedience. But we have choices that we can make. He tells a story about a man who was uh, up on the second floor of a building when he decided to jump off. And as he was falling through space, headed toward the ground, he suddenly had this thought, maybe this wasn't such a good idea. And he cried out to God, Lord, save me. And do you know what happened? He hit the ground, and he broke both his legs. And he wondered why God did not intervene. And he says this, Was it the will of God that this man would jump off the roof and break his legs? And the answer is no. God doesn't want us to do anything that would harm ourselves. But the answer is also yes. In that God has created this world with certain laws that cannot be violated And gravity is one of those laws, and God is not about to suspend gravity, for it would have created chaos over all the world. 
But instead, God wants us to think and to choose wisely. God does not desire the downfall of anyone, but gives us free will. Moses knew this. He also knew that he was about to die, that God had revealed to him that he would not cross over to the promised land. And God tells him to remind the people of the covenant that he had made with them, of the Ten Commandments that he had given them on Mount Sinai, of how they were to live and love God. And so Moses begins to remind them of all the great miracles that had taken place, how God had delivered them from slavery in the hand of Pharaoh, how God had provided water and food, and that their clothing did not wear out as they wandered throughout the wilderness for 40 years. And then Moses says to them, Choose life, not death. Choose to obey the law, the rules that are given, for in them you will find life. You see, God has not made us puppets pulling our strings to make things happen, but rather God has given us free will that we might either love him or reject him. The choice is always ours. Now, one thing that I'm certain of is what the Apostle Paul says in the book of Romans, that all things work together for the good of those who love God. Paul did not say that God makes everything happen for a reason, or that everything that happens is a part of the will of God. Rather, what, God's, what Paul says is that no matter how bad things might be, God is working to bring about something good through something that is bad. That God has that ability to turn and use evil back upon itself to find some meaning about the love of God. Now, I don't believe that God gives us cancer. I don't believe that it's God's will that we should murder one another. I don't believe that it is God's will that people should die in a car accident. I don't believe that God wills harm for any of us. But sometimes life happens. There is uh, currently a, a book out on the New York Times bestsellers. It's entitled, Everything Happens for a Reason and Other Lies I've Loved. It's the memoir of Kate Bowler. She writes, it was just three years ago when test results came back. I was 35 years old and was finally living the life that I wanted to live. She had married her high school sweetheart. She had a baby, even though she had great difficulty conceiving. She had everything she wanted. Until that day when a physician's assistant called her and said, you need to get to the hospital right away. You have stage four cancer. And she said, all I could think of was, but I have a son. My life can't come to an end. I have too much to live for. She said the next year was simply a blur as she received chemotherapies and radiation therapies. She endured more than she ever thought was possible. She had the prayers of many of her friends and family. 
She, as a seminary professor and historian, had been studying one part of the church that teaches what is known as the prosperity gospel, that God desires you to be healthy and wealthy and that everything good might come your way if you only keep a positive attitude. She said, when the word got out about my cancer, many in those communities began to write me letters to explain why this had happened, that perhaps it was some unconfessed sin, or perhaps it was a challenge to my character. And some even told her, everything happens for a reason. She said, I remember that my husband was sitting in the hospital waiting area, and someone came up to him and said, this, everything is happening for a reason. And her husband said, I'd love to hear what it is but they had no answer. And I get it. I know that we all want to know why such difficulties in our lives happen, whether it's just a random chance event, where the, it is a predetermined cause, or whether it is simply a choice we have made. Dr. Bowler went on to say, life will break your heart and sometimes it will take everything from you, even your hope. But when it does, I still believe that there is a beauty in life and that beauty and that love is found in God. Friends, we don't always know why certain things happen. We don't always know why some things don't happen for a reason. But the one thing that I am certain of is that in the midst of life and of death, 